Coates, and I'm the team of the new adult librarian at the Kingston Frontenac Public Library. And I'd like to introduce Eva Bolan. And Eva is from the Alameda, Alameda, Alameda Free Library. And Eva's going to be talking today a little bit about uh, how you can do some smaller programming in libraries with comics. Um, I'm going to be, I actually ran a Comic Con in Kingston this March, so I'm going to tell you all about that. And then we're going to end with Sven Larset, and Sven is from Super Cuts, a publishing company. And Sven is going to talk about how you can work with publishers to put on your own Comic Con at uh, the library or school. And of course, we're going to end with our panel, so we're going to end with questions. So think of your questions as we're going, and we'll have a full half hour to answer them. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, what I'm talking about is uh, what do you do if you want to throw a great big event, but you have a teeny tiny little staff. And by teeny tiny, um, in my particular case, it's me. There was just one person, and the comic book uh, program that I did, um, or that, that I've done for several years, is a free comic book day. Free comic book day is something that we've done since the inception of the event. Trust me when I say you won't need notes. Okay. It's gonna be, this is, okay. yeah, you're good. Um, each year this event gets bigger, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and there's still just me to run it. Um, one of the, the, the event is getting bigger, the staffing limitations has not changed at all. Um, and generally it's me coming into the library on my day off, running this event, and going home exhausted. Um, but, the more I do it, the easier it gets to plan it. Um, if you can grab one or two volunteers, I highly recommend it, but in a lot of our situations, we're in teeny tiny branches um, where staffing is limited, and if you want to get something done, you have to do it yourself. So think of this as a craft program on steroids. Um, things that you need to think about. What age ranges are you marketing this event to? Free Comic Book Day could easily be for all ages. And by all ages, I mean, you know, five years old through 80 years old. Um, I, because I run the children's department, I, my program is geared towards the kids. Um, how many stations can you manage at one time? This is a craft program on steroids. Can you only manage one craft at a time? I, I, can, I have learned over the years that I can handle up to three stations at one time by myself but I have to be very specific about what kinds of things I'm doing at those stations. Where do you get your ideas? All over the place. Um, and can I really do this all by myself? You can. Um, you need to do all of the same kind of planning that you would do if you were doing a craft program. Uh, you just want to incorporate as much as you possibly can. So my first step is always to make friends with my local comic book store. First find out, do you even have a local comic book store? There are lots of communities that don't. Diamond Comics has made it very easy for you, provided you plan ahead of time. Starting in about January, February, if you go to the Free Comic Book Day website and say, I ain't got no comic book store they will send you a box of comics. They will make it possible for you to still have an event. <coughs> but again, planning is everything, and you have to plan early. How, do you, how many comics should you order? Um, think of it, <laughs> first you need to decide how many comics you want to pass out per person. I tend to do one per person, because I do have comic book stores in my neighborhood. Um, I tend to go one per person, and then if they want more, please go visit your local store. Um, this is supposed to be a community event, and I try to get the community involved and get them to as many of the local stores as in the area as I can. And that's also why I don't feel bad only ordering the children's comics, because I tell the grown-ups, go to your local comic book store, find out where it is, go see what they have for you. I'm the children's department, I'm worrying about your kids. I say it nicer than that. Um, how do you pass them out? I'm all by myself. I put them on a table, and I put up a sign that says, one per person, please, and I use the honor system. Granted, the honor system only works with honorable people, so you are going to have some loss, 
But it's also a really easy way to keep track of how many people came through. You count how many comics you started with, you subtract how many comics you have left, you know how many people came to your program, kind of. Um, and then I'll double it for all of those parents who didn't pick one up for themselves because I count everyone who comes into the room. When necessary, I will count myself. What do you do if you run out of comics? You send them to the local comic book store. You keep a note in the back of your head that says I need to order more next year, and you just run with it. Passive programming can be your friend in a situation where you're trying to run a big event with a very small staff. Do you have a movie license? If so, use it. There is no shame in passing out coloring sheets. Coloring sheets makes a lot of kids very, very happy, and a lot of times you can pull in the parents into the coloring as well, because as we know, thank you bestseller list, adults like to color also. Um, I had coloring sheets out um, where it was just the body of a superhero. I had a um, uh, male superhero, female superhero, and it was up to the child, or the adult in this case, to create the costume, and they just went nuts for this. And this was, one of the, this was one of my three stations that I didn't have to watch other than making sure that there were enough coloring sheets on the table. So you can do that. Button machines. Most libraries, I like to think most libraries, have a button machine. Oh my god, people lose their minds over making buttons. Make little tiny circles of superhero symbols or Hello Kitty symbols or Sailor Moon symbols. Put them out on a table, let them cut them out, glue stick it onto a template for the button, run it through a button machine, you'd think you'd handed them a pile of gold. They love this stuff. This is going to be one of, this is a labor intensive station because you've got to operate the button machine, but these kids just go nuts for it and so do their parents. I've used button machines at adult programs too. You'd think these ladies had never put anything, never worn a brooch before. It was, a, it was just amazing. So, think, so don't think that everything has to be all hands-on, all interactive. Um, you're not turning this into a maker space. Um, this is something that, that you've, got, you've gotten them in the door by promising them a free comic book. You're getting them to stay with some, pro, with some programming, um, possibly a movie at the end, and it'll be fine. Take advantage of where you live and what's going on around you. Free Comic Book Day or any kind of program that you want to do, um, whether it's Free Comic Book Day or not, if you're have, trying to run a big program and you're trying and you have to do it by yourself, take advantage of your community. Um, CBLDF has just released uh, the Comics Connector. Comics Connector. So go to the CBLDF website, cbldf.org. And you and um, comic book creators have put themselves on the, this list if they are willing to do school and library visits. So there might be comic book creators in your area that you didn't even know about, so go take a look. What do you do if, if you live in the back of beyond and there's nobody but you and some cows and some chickens and your library? It's still okay because you're gonna have an art teacher. You're gonna have a comic book enthusiast. You're going to have somebody who knows how to make something that does something with comics. You just need to figure out who that person is. You also have Skype. You also have Skype. Thank you very much. You also have Skype. So if you can set up um, a Skype visit with a creator during Comic Book Day, that would be an amazing thing. And all you need is a, pr is a computer, a projector, and a screen. Actually, you don't even need a screen. You need a blank wall. You need something to, to project it on and you need questions to ask the creator. And I'll be honest, a lot of the creators have done this enough at this point that they've got a pattern, and, and you can kind of just sit back and make sure that there are enough coloring sheets on the, on the other station while this is going on. So know who these folks are. Are there other events that you can borrow ideas from? This year, you're gonna have a bonanza of ideas because one of the, at least in the US, I don't know about Canada, I'm sorry, um, at least in the U.S., one of the themes for summer reading this year is superheroes. And there are so many superhero, comic book, comic related, comic adjacent ideas floating around right now. This is when you just start collecting them, putting them in a file, stashing them away for later. Because the free comic book day is not going away and all of these ideas can be stolen, borrowed, 
adapt it for what you need to have happen. And find out, if you're in a community that has other comic book shops, find out what other free comic book day events are going on. Is there something you can piggyback on? We were lucky enough to have Ingrid and Nick Dragoda um, live right down the street from the library. Nick Dragoda has done Fantastic Four. He's doing East of West. He also wrote a book called How Tunes, which is basically a book that is full of maker ideas. It's done in comic book form. It's amazing. Our kids are going nuts for it. They came in and actually did a couple of the activities from the book. Um, and we got, we got them to come into the library free because Nick was going to be doing um, a program at our local comic book shop. So he came into ours, was there for an hour and a half, then just got in the car and drove across town and did his other one. So we were able to piggyback on their event, um, borrow their creators just for a couple of hours, but it, um, it transformed our event which would have been a, you know, your normal, ordinary library event into something really special. Here's a sample schedule of what we did for um, Free Comic Book this year. Um, 9 a.m., I came in. We have a, a nice big community room that's about half the size of this room. Um, set up the table. I set up the, the tables. I set up the chairs in the front of the room for the movie that we were going to show later so that I didn't have to try to rearrange things midway. Um, I put up... Uh, an easel so that Nick could draw. I hid my lunch in a corner because I knew that there was there were going to be very few opportunities for a break. At 11, we had our regular weekly toddler story time. This is a library. You can't just cancel all of your regularly scheduled programs or you're going to have some very cranky adults. Um, and not to mention some cranky toddlers. So, you, there's, so no fair uh, canceling other events in order to hold yours. It's, it's not good PR. Um, 11 a.m. So we ran our program officially started at 11, and it went until 4 o'clock. So at 11 to 5, we passed out comics while supplies last. Be sure you tell folks that it's while supplies last, um, and that way there are a lot. It's a lot easier to say we're out. You need to go to the, you need to go to your local comic book store. Um, the more upfront you are with your expectations, the easier it is to run an event by yourself. Um, 11 to 12.30 is when we had the special event. That's when Nick and Ingrid came in. Um, if you expect a crowd, this is when you want to make sure you have a, volunteer, a couple of volunteers. Um, you, don't, you, don't need, you don't necessarily need somebody for the entire day, but when you're, if you're expecting a crowd, do the best you can. We still didn't. It was still just me, Nick, and Ingrid, um, and we made it work. Uh, 11.31, give yourself a chance to get rid of your special event, bring out your regular station stuff, um, go, go to the bathroom, grab something to eat, because the people aren't going to stop coming. And if it's just you, you have to make do. Um, we had the crafts running the entire time, but we started the movie at 3. Um, the movie was in the front of the room, the crafts were in the back of the room, so that you, when you have the little kids come in who aren't going to be interested in the movie, there was still enough stuff for them to be doing while the older kids and the parents are watching the movie, that everybody is happy. Um, four o'clock, we started cleaning up the crafts, waited for the movie to end. The movie ended 20 minutes before the library closed, so that we were cleaned up and out the door, and we didn't actually have to go into overtime. So it is possible to do it completely by yourself. Don't forget to take pictures. Marketing, 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 marketing. Um, put it on your Facebook page. Hey, look at what we did. Um, put it on your Twitter. This was an amazing event. Um, if, you, if your library has an Instagram account, throw those pictures out there. Get, make sure City Hall knows what you were doing and how responsive people were and that families were excited. Um, the, the more attention you bring to your program this year, the more people are going to remember and want to do it next year. And just keep reminding them, this is a, a, a program that happens every single year. It's always the, third, the first Saturday in May. We're always going to do something. It's always going to be great. So, um, so don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Don't hide your light under a bushel. Get it out there. It's going to make um, you look good. It's going to make your library look good, which is going to make your director happy, which is going to make it possible for maybe uh, her to let you have a staff member help you next year. <laughs> and that's my presentation. Okay, so if you have a little bit of a bigger budget and a little more 
staff time to spend developing a common fund. That's what I was involved in at the Kingston Frontenac Public Library. So we ran a, our own little mini con. Um, we called it King Con, because of course it's Kingston. Um, I put it right there. And I have handed out, I have handouts, so I've handed out the poster and the schedule of events to some of you. I have more left, so if you'd like one, you can collect it at the end. So, uh, this came to fruition around um, September. Uh, I was a brand new librarian at the Kingston Frontenac Public Library, so I'm a teen and new adult, I deal with ages 13 to 30, which tends to fit this demographic. Um, and we approached some local gaming stores and said, hey, uh, have, you, have you thought about running a con before? Um, we don't have one in Kingston. There, people go to Toronto or to Ottawa to access that type of programming, and we thought it would be a good way to uh, reach a different demographic in our community. So we approached Minotaur and Nexus. Those are two local gaming stores in the downtown core of Kingston. And they're pretty close to the library as well, the central library. And it turned out that they had actually run a, a gaming convention before uh, called KingCon, and they developed some marketing for it. But uh, due to some unfortunate circumstances, there was actually a, an issue with their venue, of the hotel that they were using. And they, they had to push their con back, and it just had worked out, so we hadn't done anything for about three years. But there was there was a following for King Con, and we decided to expand it and make it bigger and better. And they were really excited to be involved and have the downtown as the venue for the convention. So we ran most of the events in the in the library in our central library. So we have lots of spaces and rooms to do that. But really, the downtown was our venue. So we. We also had events running out of those stores. And then um, Kingston has a university as well. So we tapped into their comic book club, the Queen's Comic Book Club, and got them on board as well. So we had three major partners. Um, and we promoted the con, so we made it a celebration of everything gaming, sci-fi, fantasy, and comic books. We promoted it through social media posters and, of course, a media release. So we actually, on Facebook, we actually created a group, a page for, for KingCon. People could like it. And if you're interested in hearing more and kind of following our progress, you can like the page as well. Um, we had, so we had somebody representing from Queens. So he did all of the promotion on campus and things like that. We had posters, so our graphic designer took there, um, that monkey figure there, that was the logo for the previous King Con. So our graphic designer took that and added some other really fun marketing, made posters and things like that, we made banners, and then we just pushed it out to the local newspapers and radio stations, and it was really uh, broadcasted all over town. So our schedule of events, that's included in the handout, but we had over 30 events over the course of three days. And we ran our con, it was the weekend before uh, Comic Con in Toronto. So it, was, it offered an alternative to people, it was around the same time. And we also thought we could sort of piggyback on that and maybe get some of the presenters to come to ours that, that would be around Toronto. It's Kingston's only about two and a half hour drive away. We had gaming tournaments run by our partners, so we had, um, there's some listed over there that an X, Star Wars X gaming tournament, we had a pandemic tournament, we had Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons, lots of things going on simultaneously in different rooms of the library and off-site. Um, we had broadsword demonstrations, because there's local groups that, that do that, and a cosplay workshop, because there's a cosplay club at Queens, and Victorian self-defense. Lots of demonstrations, uh, drop-in board games, so people could come and, and just play board games if they want. Uh, 
Uh, we also have a trade show on the Saturday. So we had 25 different vendors and tenants, we had comic book creators, queens clubs, artists, jewelry makers, and people could just, they could sell their, their wares. This picture is, um, I didn't get a good shot of the trade show, but so we had a, a gaming tournament going on in the middle of the room, then on the outside, we had our vendors. So that was a really popular part. And we also had some special guest speakers. So we were really, really lucky. We got Cecil Castellucci and Scott Chandler. These are award-winning Canadian graphic novelists. Um, and Cecil, actually, she came all the way. She lives in LA, but she's Canadian. So she came all the way from LA to come to our con. Uh, and then Scott Chandler is absolutely amazing. So Cecil focuses on teens. Scott does adults and, and kids. So he did one session for kids, one session for adults. Uh, extras. So we also had our 3D printer out. So we were printing out uh, fandom types of things. We had a button maker. So Eva mentioned that button, button makers are amazing. And they are. That constantly had um, a group of people surrounding it. And we, we used our disc cards. So like old comic books that are in rough condition. We used those to make the buttons. So it was a lot of fun people to come make a button, check out our 3D printer. Uh, and we had Debbie's printed with the King Kong logo on it that we gave away as freebies. We also had a prize table so people could come and check in. And our partners uh, donated prizes to use. We sold, we sold tickets, raffle tickets. Because a lot of the time when you do gaming tournaments, people come out for the prizes. So this is a way to kind of include Everyone didn't cost the library anything to offer it and gave them a bit of incentive if they were participating in the tournament. Uh, and we had stormtroopers, so they were amazing. Um, so we got the stormtroopers to the 501st Legion. So you can go to their website, they volunteer actually. So uh, if you want to get stormtroopers out, uh, do that. And I strongly recommend it. They were a big hit and they advertised our event too. So we had people coming just to see the stormtroopers. And obviously, the Econofon is a bit of a, an adult, more of an adult or teen focus. So it was nice having the stormtroopers there to kind of include the little guys too and the families, give them something to do. And for the families as well, like going to look at the 3D printer, the drop in board games, or the button maker. It's all family friendly. Uh, and then, of course, the demonstrations too. They really like the little guys. Really and stuff like that. Uh, we also did a costume contest. The winner is this little guy in the middle. Um, but as you can see, the event uh, attracted people of all ages. So we had families come out, we had lots of teens, we had seniors, uh, it was just younger adults too. I know it can be hard for libraries to reach those 20 somethings a lot of the time, but this really appealed to them. And what we did with the costume contest, uh, the prize was a $50 gift card to one of the gaming stores that we partnered with. But we, we took pictures of them as they were coming in. And if they wanted to enter, we posted them on our Facebook page. And whoever got the most likes on their picture won the prize. Uh, and it was great. Like we, we haven't had a lot of success with social media um, contests at our library. So this exploded. We have hundreds of people liking these pictures and sharing them and then liking our library page. It was by far the most successful um, social media contest we've had. We also did a king contest, a fan art and fan fiction contest. This was the winning fan art here. Um, so they had to submit that and it was also a nice way to, to offer more prizes and get people thinking about creation and all of the So finally, you're probably wondering, how much did this cost? It's must have been tons of money. Actually, working with our partners, most of, well, every event was free and didn't cost us anything except for our guest speakers. So we applied for a grant from Canada Council for the Arts, and that paid for our speakers. And our friends at the library, they gave us 
so money to spend. So we were able to do that banner there. They paid for that. So that was about $200. Uh, and they paid for accommodations for our guest speakers as well. And we had those dice made to hand out to people. So we had, but you, didn't, you, would, you don't necessarily need to have giveaways. That was just an extra thing. So we were lucky to have that, that bit of extra money. Really, like the events and the everything else didn't cost us a thing other than staff time. So I did put a lot of effort into this event. So successes, we had 750 people of all ages in attendance. I have never seen our central library that busy before. It was just crawling with people. And we had the media was there constantly. Uh, it was absolutely amazing. Something about running your own Comic Con that just engages your community and it was so, so exciting. We got lots of new library card signups as well. Lots of people were coming in that had never been in the library before or didn't know where it was. People were actually going to the gaming stores and saying, where is the central library? I mean, it says a public library, we are on it, but it's that event got the attention of the community and reached the demographic. Uh, increased rapport with local businesses. That was huge as well. Now we've got this great relationship with these gaming stores. Um, they did free comic book day too, and now they're giving us their leftover comics to use for prizes. They'll put up posters and advertise things for us, and they're just really on board and advocating for the library and the community. And I have here reaching new adults. In case you don't know what new adults are, they're, they're the 20 somethings. Um, this was this is one of my jobs is to really reach that demographic and this event did it. It was great. Um, so that out. Right. Good morning everybody. So the good news that I've got to deliver to you guys is publishers love library conventions. We love them so much that we're actually willing to give you free stuff to give away at your conventions. We're looking to help you any way we can. This first uh, URL that I threw out here, last year Heidi McDonald from Publishers Weekly, who's actually going to be attending TGAF, uh, did a great overview of the trend that's sweeping both the United States and Canada for library conventions. So this is almost like 101, basically, for how to put on a comic con in your library. So, when you're looking for stuff to give away, when you're looking for programming ideas, promos, there's a bunch of different people you can go to. Obviously, I'm a publisher. Paper Cuts is a kid's graphic novel publisher, so libraries and teachers are a big part of what we do, but it's not just publishers. As my colleagues up here have been saying, local creators are a terrific resource for you. Local comic book stores. Don't forget art and design schools as well, especially if you're focused on kids. Basically, what you're doing is priming them for the next generation of students that are going to go to the Ontario College of Art or Sheridan College or whatever your local institution is. There are also industry organizations that can help you out, like the Children's Book Council or the CBLDF. My friend Charles Brownstein from the CBLDF is here, and I'm going to ask him to tell you a little bit more about that in a second. But you've got tons <coughs> of places to go to, not just for giveaways, but for information, for resources on how to get this done. So a couple of, you know, I'm here to give you guys <laughs> inside information. Uh, telling it like it is, not all publishers are created equal. I can say this because I used to be the marketing director for Marvel Comics, uh, which is, you know, the biggest comic book publisher in North America. You know, the company that's going there, you know, the company behind these $250 million movies, I gotta tell you, they don't care about libraries that much. Uh, why? Because that's not where their bread and butter is. You know, the core demographic for Marvel is 35-year-old guys. You know, and it's really easy for them to reach those guys. They make a lot of money reaching those guys, but they leave it up to a lot of other people to train the next generation of readers. On the other hand, a lot of the people you're gonna see this weekend, John Quarterly up in Montreal, first, second, Division of Macmillan, Top Shelf, and of course ourselves, you know, there are people who are very dedicated to the library and the educational market, and you'll see that reflected in the materials that they produce as well. There are also graphic novel imprints, traditional publishers. I didn't count for a second in there, even though they're a part of Macmillan. 
but Scholastic, Norton, Abrams, you know, there are